IS250, uh, 2006. Um, it's in perfect condition. A uh, little, little body work to the bumper, the front bumper. Um, that's about it, honestly. Uh, but uh, my future plans is coilovers, if I could find it, since it's an all-wheel drive, so more than likely lowering springs. Um, I do believe they do make coilovers, but I think it's like around $1,200 or $1,500. Um, if it was a rear-wheel drive, it will be you know much cheaper for coilovers. But um, anyway, let me show you today's issue. So since she's been sitting, let's see, does this even work? Nope, no light. Oh, wait, wait, we got a little bit of light. Door. Nope. On, off. Nope. So you can pretty much see um, it's got a light for the door, but that's about it. Let me put my foot on the brake. Okay, so that's on. What about if we. No, Alright, well, maybe we just gotta press this. Nope. She's not gonna do much. I'll be surprised if she does. All right. Foot on the brake. Right, let's see what happens. So right now it's supposed to be starting. Just gotta check into light on. Lights, nothing. Hmm. All right, so right now she's stuck in start. She's absolutely stuck in start. I don't want to do anything else. What if I close this door? Nothing. Okay. Before I do anything, I do have this uh, battery tester. It basically uh, just tests to see how much uh, voltage you're getting. Smart Tester 2, which uh, will also uh, tell you if your uh, battery's good or if your starter is, you know, bad. So we're just going to connect this real quick. I know the battery is, uh, it needs, a, needs to be recharged, which I do have a battery charger. So I do have that, which I do plan to charge the battery, but right now, Again, the car is just sitting here parked. This is negative, that's positive, that's usually black, that's usually grid. All right, so right now we're looking at 4.37. <laughs> it's definitely saying uh, it's a dead battery. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but 4.37 and it says she's a dead one. Let me go back inside real quick and Press, uh, put my foot on the brake and press the uh, on and see if it does anything. Look at that, it completely died. So, I'll be putting my foot on the brake, it, it completely killed it. All right, cool. So this battery is completely, it's completely dead. So I have one of these portable battery jump starters, but the issue with this is that when I received this as a gift, I uh, basically, you know, I had opened it up through in a toolbox and that particular vehicle, once I had sold it, I just, you know, tossed everything else out of that vehicle into bags and now I lost the charger. So we're gonna go old school and we're going to use jumper cables. Now, as you can see, this is the battery right here on the Tundra. And as you can see, this is the battery on our Lexus IS250. So basically, we could take our cable and have it go straight across to the battery. And 
as you can see, I have the cables split apart. So that way when I'm plugging in the Tundra cables, these cables, they're not close to each other and they're not moving. All right, so as you can see, we got the negative and positive on here. And then on the Tundra, negative and positive on there. So now what we're gonna do is start the truck up then attempt to start this bad boy up. So let's see what happens. All right, guys, as you can see, we got it started. <laughs> All thanks to our big boy, the big tundra. There we go. It's still live until we remove the one from the tundra. So let's do that. All right. All right, guys. So another thing that I want to state um, for best practice that I usually follow is that if I'm using a vehicle such as this is the donor vehicle that's jump starting another vehicle, I will allow this vehicle a couple of couple of minutes, uh, probably two minutes or so, so that way it can also uh, you know recharge the system because uh, uh, jump starting a battery it can be stressful at times, especially during a cold. So always, so if you donor vehicle, don't just jump start and turn it off. No, jump start, let let it run for a couple of minutes. So that way it can recharge the system. So that way when you come back at night to go, go, you know, drive wherever you need to be, <laughs> your vehicle will start <laughs> and you won't be looking for a jump. So be sure to follow that information. Man, I didn't even know I had so many leaves right there. I love this truck. Definitely got to uh, get to cleaning this. And uh, while I'm here, I'm gonna check the oil. Uh, make sure the oil's good. Check the radiator fluid. Uh, I plan on uh, cipher the current washer fluid because you know they somebody put that cheap, uh, you know, uh, what do you want to call it? The cheap uh, gas station stuff in here. So when it rains and you use it, it, it doesn't provide that clarity of a windshield so and it's definitely been causing some issues when it comes to snow and dirt so I definitely think I'm gonna go ahead and look at trying to get that out the system but uh, yeah guys uh, other than that everything is good 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 truck is running good and our car is running good as well. We're gonna throw a, uh, a load on her real quick and see how she does. And basically, the load is just gonna be turned on the headlights. So we're gonna listen out for any changes in the engine. A little, little change, a little change, but uh, lights bright, not dim. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, let it run for, honestly, what I need to do is to drive it. That's what I need to do. That's the, that's the proper way of doing it. Cause even just starting it up and let it run for like 25 minutes, that's not gonna really get that battery to uh, re, you know, recharge itself. Um, you need to drive it, take it on the highway, drive it around for like 30 minutes, come back, she'll be good to go. I know, I know, you're cold, you're cold.
My baby's cold right now. But yeah, I just love this car because it's just it's so relaxing to drive. Absolutely relaxing to drive. Let's look at the inside of it. Kept her clean. Definitely kept her clean while she was sitting there maintaining. Driver's side, of course, no. When I, when I when I drive, I pick up everything that's on the ground. I'll tell you that for a fact. But so far, she's doing good. The steering wheel is functioning because uh, on these cars it has electric power steering, so that's functioning. And that was one of my main concerns is to utilize it um, because on these Lexus. IS 250s and honestly or well, majority of uh, the vehicles that have electric power steering without power you have no power steering and the last time I um, I, I want to say actually the first time when I bought this vehicle I bought it from a dealership the location where it was at prior uh, it sat for a while um, so it sat in a dealership lot for a while <laughs> a while and uh basically what happened is that location where it was at uh the power steering uh it rusted out inside the gears rusted out uh it locked up and all um and i i read something on the forums about um with the lexus is uh 250s if you let your vehicle sit for a while especially during the cold um you know you have a greater chance of having issues with the power steering system so if you do let your lexus is 250 or 350 uh sit around at least you know start it up and move the steering wheel take a cruise around the neighborhood um and then come back so that way your power steering system is you know still in functioning condition but yeah i got so much that's planned for this car i got a whole bunch of wheel speed sensors uh that i need to replace and that's going to basically uh, resolve all of these Christmas lights that you guys see. Uh, I, I cleaned the wheel speed sensors, but I need to actually replace them. I actually replaced two in the back, but what had happened is that, you know, after time, uh, gunk and dirt got into them. Those wheel, wheel speed sensors, um, they're trash, so I gotta replace them all. Got to replace all the wheel speed sensors, but that will that will definitely resolve this issue with all these lights that you guys see about check vsc check four wheel drive um let's see, close the door brake abs it says key not detected all right that's another thing i gotta change the battery on the key but um yeah i, I got i got a quite few things that i need to do with this bad boy it used to be the daily driver uh, so it's used to commuting around, but since, you know, I bought the big Tundra right there, uh, that's become the daily driver. <laughs> so this one's become the weekend, but, um, every time I'm, you know, did the weekends here, I'm just like, man, I gotta, I gotta haul something around. So I'll take the Tundra and she's just been sleeping. At least I can say one thing for fact is that. She's been sleeping good, you know. She's been sleeping real clean, other than the driver's driver floor. But uh, runs good. Purrs like a kitten. Drove the car around. She drives good as usual because you know she's a she's a Toyota. Even though she's got that Lexus badge there, she is a Toyota inside. So you know. I wasn't really expecting any issues per se because when you have a Toyota vehicle, <laughs> you can do stuff like that. You know, you can park your car, let it hibernate throughout the winter, and then come back, you know, charge up the battery, and boom, it works perfectly fine. Turn my heat off, heat's off, car off, and it says low key battery. I do know that for a fact. I gotta change that. So now I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and I'm gonna give her a start. And there you go. She starts right up. So what I'm gonna do 
um, from now on, let's go back to my common practice, which is basically start the car up at least every other day instead of once <laughs> once a week um, because the temperature, it drops. It drops hard at night. Um, and that's kind of what happened. The temperature dropped, couldn't start the car, and I was just like, you know what? I got so much to do <laughs> with work, uh, home projects, kids. I was like, you know, I'm gonna just get to my car when it warms up so that way, you know, I can just go back to my projects and work on my car. Um, this is really not a project car because everything works. Um, when I bought this car, I bought it from a dealership. It was Toyota certified. Um, only reason why it has issues with the bumper is because, you know, parking lot, some people, you know, they just bump into you, damage your bumper and run off. So those type of things. So, you know, it's it's a vehicle, um, you know, you're going to get scratches. You're going to get people bumping into you. Um, honestly, uh, it's it's material things. It's things like, such as this car. I love this car, but it's a material um, item and you know life is short you can't take material items with you so that's how i live my life um you know i try to make the best of stuff that i have but you know i know things happen so on that note guys don't forget to like comment subscribe and share my video peace